Oh, this? Well, I was court ordered to wear a life vest for 10 years. I got on the judge's bad side by wearing a bucket hat to my hearing. From Absolutely Productions, this is Branchburg with Brendan and Corey. Bigfoot, the Yeti, the Loch Ness Monster. Every part of the world has its own mythical creature, and Branchburg is no different. Today marks the 100th anniversary of the first sighting of the legendary Branchburg Goblin. The story of the Branchburg Goblin began as an old wives' tale at the turn of the 20th century used to get naughty children to clean their fingernails. However, as the legend grew, residents began claiming to see the goblin in real life. Since the first recorded sighting back in 1919, Branchburg has had hundreds of goblin reportings, most of which reach the same conclusion. In Branchburg lives a little blue goblin who causes mischief and screams a lot. Over the years, people have claimed to have seen the goblin ripping off their windshield wipers, spitting on mailboxes, and waving a small handgun at traffic. Everyone knows someone who says they've seen the goblin, but there is only one known photograph of what believers claim to be him. A 1983 photo where a blurry blue goblin-like object is seen throwing up in White Oak Park. But the photo has its skeptics, with many saying it's just a sick child wearing a Cookie Monster costume. The debate still rages on today as to whether or not the Branchburg Goblin is actually real. Of course, the Goblin has plenty of believers. Branchburg resident Mark McGowan says he saw the Goblin just last week. That little blue guy keeps rubbing his face against my tomatoes! He just looks right at me and smiles as he rubs his face all over them! He's not eating them, it's just... I don't want him to do this! No one believes me! My wife left, she got full custody of the kids, she got all my clothes for some reason in the divorce- The Branchburg Goblin Society will be holding an anniversary luncheon at the Elks Club later today. This is Branchburg Public Radio. My name is Gary, and I love gambling. Of course, there are no casinos in Branchburg, but I make do. I bet on everything from high school football to when the power will go out. I'll go to a nursing home to visit my dad, bet some old woman on a coin toss, and become the proud owner of an oxygen tank. Then I'll sneak onto the middle school playground during recess and make 200 bucks playing Foursquare. Then I'll lose 400 bucks playing tetherball. What can I say? I love the rush. But I'm on a cold streak right now. Everyone's counting me out. Just last night, I lost my house on a game of Uno with my neighbors. I didn't know Uno had wild cards. They kept saying we thought you were just joking, we really don't want a second house, but I'm a man of my word, okay? And they must want my house because they still haven't given me my keys back. Yeah, uh, wife was in the bathroom when this happened. I turned to my neighbors when I heard the door close and said, how about we take things up a notch? There's really no excuse on my end, I was the only sober one there. Decided to stop drinking after I tried to mow my pool with my riding mower. I guess that's preferable to losing your house though. I think I'm more contained when I'm on the sauce, actually. Maybe I'll start drinking again. My wife slept at her mother's. Didn't come back this morning. Man, I'll do anything to win her back. But I guess there's really only one thing I can do. And that's go double or nothing on Uno tonight, night, night. Hello, this is Branchburg High School. Hi, it's my birthday. Uh, happy birthday? Thanks. Can I help you with something? Well, I noticed the electric sign outside the school wishes people happy birthday, and I was wondering if I could get a birthday wish too. Oh, uh, well, I mean, that's just for students. I'm going to assume you're not a student? No, I'm a computer programmer. So do you have a child who goes here? No, that makes it so there's no conflict of interest. 
Sir, we're not gonna put your name on the sign. What, why not? Because you're not a student. But you wish Martin Luther King a happy birthday. <sighs> Sir, that's obviously different. Sir? Hello? Look outside. Excuse me? Look outside. At the sign. <sighs> I swear to God, okay. <laughs> what the? Why does it say happy 30th birthday, Michael? You left me no choice. I was forced to hack into the sign. How did you? Oh, okay, never mind. We could just take it down. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Excuse me? I would not do that if I were you. Are you threatening me? Let's just say that if my happy birthday wish is not left up there for the next two months... Two months?! TWO MONTHS! I will apply for a substitute teaching job, and once accepted into your school, I will corrupt your students FROM THE INSIDE! I will teach them that George Washington was Chinese! I will teach them that multiplication isn't real! I will teach them that the solar system is 72 degrees Fahrenheit! Alright, I'm hanging up. FINE! I'm having a small birthday party at Buffalo Wild Wings later. Just a couple friends. I hope you can swing by. Yes, Doreen, I saw the sign. Just leave it like that. Trust me, just, just leave it like that. This day in Branchburg history, 2002. A mysterious man appears on the doorsteps of every Branchburg resident and says he will do their laundry. Hundreds give this man their clothes, but instead of doing their laundry, the man just steals the clothes and leaves town. He does this in four more New Jersey towns before finally being killed in Hillsboro by the National Guard. The Branchburg Goblin has been captured. The legendary creature, whose actual existence was the subject of heavy debate over the years, was caught and identified by Branchburg police earlier this morning after he crawled into a red box machine and couldn't get out. Police Chief Earl Bremer was the one who first identified the Goblin. At around 6 a.m. this morning, Branchburg police was notified about a disturbance at the Branchburg ShopRite. Upon arriving, we are led to the red box machine, where loud shrieks were heard coming from the inside. After dismantling the machine using the jaws of life, we discovered a small blue goblin sitting inside, clutching eight copies of Rocket Man. We determined that this was, in fact, the legendary Branchburg Goblin. The goblin was then handcuffed and sent over to Branchburg Hospital for testing. After a series of tests, doctors discovered the Branchburg Goblin possesses a 6th grade reading level. So starting tomorrow, the Goblin will attend Branchburg Middle School and has been placed into Mrs. Rattu's 6th grade homeroom. You're driving back from a doctor's appointment, where your doctor told you that you have 50 years to live. As you listen to a woman on the radio talk about an airplane she once saw, you notice that in front of you is a school bus, filled to the brim with schoolchildren. A couple of them look out the back door, and make faces at you that involve their tongues. One of them even flips you off using his middle finger. It's annoying, but you remember that when you were a kid, you would write, the bus driver is threatening to forget how to drive on a piece of paper and put it on the window. One time someone got out of their car to confront your bus driver, and your bus driver roundhouse kicked that person in the head. Yes, it's just normal kid stuff, and you chuckle softly to yourself. Their faces and fingers continue for a few miles, but as you approach a red light, something peculiar happens. Upon stopping, the kids' faces turn serious. They then jump out the back door of the bus and walk right towards your car. They begin taking your tires off. You honk your horn wildly, but soon you notice that these 30 children are not stealing your tires, but in fact are replacing them with new tires. All four of your wheels are removed and replaced in no more than seven seconds. The child who flipped you off earlier slams the hood of your car with his open palm, then gives you a thumbs up. 
you instinctively give a thumbs up back. He then whistles loudly with his fingers. Then he and all the other children run back inside the bus. They close the door behind them, and when the light turns green, the bus drives away. Only the kid who is doing one final safety check on your tires is left behind, and when he notices the bus is gone, he runs into the woods. You stare ahead without moving, and get honked at several times. Was that some sort of after-school program? You're very impressed with their efficiency and skill level, and think about writing a letter of recommendation to NASCAR. Of course, the wheels they gave you are wooden and more of a square shape, so that's not ideal. But is it really worth complaining about, considering it was done for free? You get honked at several more times, then floor it. I always, I always keep myself open to moments of discovery, and yesterday was no exception. Standing in line at the deli counter, I looked at my ticket and realized, we are so much more than just a number. I then immediately went to the ticket taker and took three more tickets, which of course is a far more accurate estimation of my worth, and also one ticket for each slice of cheese I wanted. This of course was after I was rejected by my fellow grocery shoppers when I shouted to them that perhaps if we combined all of our tickets together, we could purchase an entire ham. But soon enough, I was presented with my cheese and then immediately collapsed to the ground as I forgot I'm dangerously lactose intolerant. As I writhed on the floor, waiting for my bowels to evacuate, three employees dragged me out of the store. When we reached the property limit, they asked me my name for documentation purposes, to which I pulled out my tickets and said, number 45. Number 46, number 47, and number 48. Gentlemen, these four numbers are the closest thing I have to a name. However, when the sun rises again, their meaning will soon be lost, as a new set of tickets will be placed in the deli. My identity, like footprints along the shore, will be washed away, washed away, washed away. Branchburg Middle School students. As your principal, I have gathered you all here today to share some unfortunate news. One of our finest students has passed. I am asking for a moment of silence for our very own, the Branchburg Goblin. I'll wait. Thank you. You may be seated. Earlier today, the goblin succumbed to peer pressure and smoked one cigarette, which immediately caused his little lungs to explode. I am now going to play the audio a student captured of the goblin's death to remind us that even the best of us can fall victim to peer pressure. Come on, goblin, smoke this cigarette. But let us remember the goblin the way he was in life. Who can forget the first day the goblin showed up at our school? Sure, he was a bit confused at first, ripping out a water fountain and eating all of the nurse's ice packs, but soon he became as fine a student as we've ever had. He was second trumpet in the wind ensemble. He founded our school's manga club. From fainting in health class at the sight of the female reproductive system, to how he would sprint in the hallway with every single textbook in his backpack. He was just like anyone else, even though he was a little blue goblin. And who could forget his confidence, asking out the most popular girl in school, Christina Potley, with a series of elaborate dances and grunts. She said no, and even though he responded by climbing into the heating duct and shrieking for hours, the incessant echo causing us to have a half day, her rejection did not break his spirit. Bert the custodian, you knew him well. I believe you wanted to say a few words. 
Yes, um, the Branchburg Goblin always treated me with respect and decency. Whenever he threw up, which was frequent, he would always quickly eat it right back. I later learned this was just part of his digestive system, but it was still nice. He taught me patience, and I taught him not to sleep in the urnals. I will always cherish the little manga drawing he made of me. That was beautiful, Bert. In conclusion, we'll be setting up a memorial fund in the goblin's honor, and his trademark little polo will be hung in the rafters of the gymnasium for the remainder of time. Thank you. And just a reminder, today's lunch will be hibachi. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to This is Branchburg with Brendan and Corey. They'll be glad you did. <laughs>